In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, we're going to be talking about augments and which are the best to use for characters in this game. We're going to be going through every augment in the game. We're going to be talking about what it does, what its values are, the ones that we know so far, and just kind of explaining why some of the augments that you think are really good in this game are not, and some of the ones you don't think are very good are actually a lot better. Okay, we're going to start with the fighter augments first. First one is metal. This augments your physical defense. In my testing, this gives you somewhere around 30% increase to physical defense, which is extremely good to say the least. I think people don't realize how much physical defense you actually get from metal when you first see it. So this is one that I can highly recommend on anyone needing a little extra physical defense. Provocation increases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. I believe this doubles your likelihood of being targeted. Obviously, we don't know what the likelihood is to begin with, but it doubles that from my understanding. So obviously, if you're playing any sort of tank, um, you know, trickster, fighter, warrior, this would be good for you. Thu provides you an additional carry weight, 10 kilograms, and obviously carry weight is good on any character. As you get further into the game, and doesn't seem to be as much as it is at the beginning. So this is one that I think is much better earlier on in the game than later. And the next one is Dominion. This allows you to lift up and pin down foes for an extended duration. I don't know exactly how long the duration is in my testing. I couldn't notice a difference, at least on picking up. I haven't seen how long you can pin down an enemy, but usually when you pin down an enemy, you're attacking them anyway. So I don't see this being particularly useful for most people. So Diligence is supposed to hasten the recovery when downed or when crawling. And I don't really notice a difference when this is being used. I've done some testing, and initially I thought that it was very useful, but I can't seem to see a difference between when you're using this and when not, so I honestly don't know if it's actually working correctly or not, and I wouldn't recommend it until we have more information. So next we move to Ambuscade. This is the first Archer one. This increases damage dealt by your attacks when targets are not in battle stance. I don't know exactly what qualifies as not being in battle stance. I'm assuming this means enemies that haven't detected you yet. Um, essentially, for a character, that means not with your weapons drawn, so I'm assuming it's similar to them. This increases that by 10%. So that's a decent amount, in my opinion, particularly if you are like trying to pick things far off far away with your archer. So definitely a decent one to have on any sort of ranged character that's trying to get the first attack off, even like if you're playing like a mage or sorcerer. So next up is Endurance. This increases your max stamina by 150. That's a decent amount of stamina. It's not a small amount, and you could certainly have l worse augments on characters in this game. So I would suggest if you don't know what to do, this is probably not a bad one for any character. So next up we have Radiance. This causes your lantern to consume less oil and illuminates a wider area. I really like this one for exploring the game. It's not like great in combat, but it makes it so that your lantern consumes oil at two thirds the speed it would normally, and it makes it illuminate twice as big of an area. And that illumination area is really nice when exploring and at nighttime. So definitely one that I could highly recommend on any character. Next is Lethality. This increases the damage you deal when you're striking a target's vitals. I think this is like the head or on the dragon, like in the chest. There might be other vital spots on different enemies, but the damage you get increased here is 5%. Um, this isn't a ton. I was hoping it would be higher, but it's still pretty good. In my opinion, I think the people going to use this the most are probably like archers and magic archers that can target vitals a lot easier. Although when an enemy is down on the ground, like if they get knocked down, you can hit him in the head very easily as well. So this is probably good on any character and it's one that, you know, there are worse ones to have, but there are better ones to have too, probably. So the next one is Avidity. This enables you to clamber up cliffs and scale foes and other surfaces more quickly. It increases your climb speed by 10%. That's not a ton in my opinion. If you're someone who really loves climbing, this might be great for you, but I don't think you're going to feel a difference when you're using it, so I'm not sure it's worth it. Next is Apotropasm. This increases your magic defense again by about 30%, similarly to the way Metal does physical defense by 30%. That is a lot of protection, and I feel like if everyone put this and metal on their pawns as well as diligence and maybe a couple other ones like everyone's pawns would be super tanky and it'd just be amazing. So next we have Beatitude. This increases the curative effect of consumables as well as spells that heal by 10%. This is actually pretty good in my opinion if you have a mage in your group this is probably one you should have on them or if maybe you're playing a magic archer and you're planning on healing your group this would definitely be a good choice. Next is Intervention. This reduces the duration of debilitations you're afflicted with. This reduces their duration to 70% of what they would normally be, so they will wear off faster. I'm not sure this is absolutely worth it in my opinion, because usually mages can clear any debilitations that you have. 
and unless you're running in a group without a mage, and even then you would probably use consumable. So I don't know if this one is really that great. Perpetuation extends the duration of enchantments and invigorations. This extends them by 20%. I think this is probably pretty good if you're playing like a mage character, someone that's using like fire affinity or ice affinity on your characters. I think this is definitely a good one to have or other buffs, etc. So if you're playing a mage, this is probably like a no brainer to put on. Them. And then Exaltation increases your stamina recovery speed by 10%. That's a good amount in my opinion, particularly since there are other items like rings in this game that increase your stamina recovery further. So I think that's probably worth it on just about any class. So next we come to Thief Augments. The first one is Subtlety. This decreases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. I think this reduces your likelihood of being targeted by about 15%. So it's not a ton, but it's obviously, you know, not nothing. So if your fighter or your tank has you know, the one that increases their likelihood and you have this on you, I think it's very unlikely you're going to get targeted much. Gratification is next for Thief, and what this does is it heals you for 4% of your max health whenever you kill an enemy yourself personally. Uh, it can be an animal as well. It doesn't have to be like, you know, some ridiculously hostile enemy. And since this is based off your max health, the higher your max health is, the more health you're going to get back when you kill enemies. And I don't know how useful this one is. If you have a healer in your group, you know, that's usually going to do most of the healing for you. This can help keep you topped off in combat, I suppose. But usually trash enemies in this game are not hard to defeat and where you really struggle is against like one tough boss sometimes. So this is probably not as useful as it could be, although it's probably useful where you're just like leveling going through the game. Next is Poise. This reduces the stamina consumed when you're struggling in a foe's grip. So if you get grabbed by an enemy, this reduces it by about 20%. This isn't that great, in my opinion. You should not be aiming to get grabbed. And even when you do, like... It's a bad situation, so I'm not thinking that anyone really needs to take this one. So next you have Vigor. This reduces the stamina consumed when clinging to or pinning down foes. If you're someone who likes to climb on enemies, this can reduce the stamina you consume by 15% when climbing to them. So I think that's probably the only type of character that would use that. This is probably like a thief, maybe, probably. I don't see anyone else really using that all that much. So next up for Thief is Verve. This augments your strength by 30. This is actually really not that good. For a level 9 augment or a vocation rank 9 augment on a class to only get 30 strength when you'll have, you know, over a thousand of this by the end of the game. Um, just not that great in general, in my opinion. I mean, it's if you want damage and you're never getting hit, then it's something to add to your character. But it's really not that great for how long it takes to unlock. Next up, we have Vitality on Warrior. This increases your maximum health by 200. This is a decent amount of health, in my opinion. If, you, again, you don't know what to put on your characters, Vitality is not a bad one. If everyone had that on their pawn and their pawns had 200 extra health, that would be great, too. Next is Impact. This improves your ability to push and pull targets when grabbing a hold of them. I don't think this is that useful. As far as I can tell, it improves this by 100%. So I'm not sure how useful that is in general, but maybe I'm just missing something here. I'm not sure you would really need this in any way. Next, you have Pertinacity. This improves your ability to break through an opponent's guard. I'm assuming this is when like an enemy is blocking with a shield or something like that, your ability to like bust through that. I don't know exactly how much this increases that. Like there's kind of an unknown quantity here. And I'm not sure how valuable that is considering that very few enemies are like blocking a lot of the time. So that could be one that's just not very useful. Or maybe it's a sleeper and some enemies like way late in the end game or something you could use this for. But at the moment, it doesn't seem overly useful. So Dominance increases your knockdown power by about 15% in my testing. That's a significant amount, particularly on a class that focuses on knocking down enemies. And that means the higher you get, you know, the better equipment you get, the more relevant this is going to be. So highly recommend this one on any warrior. And the level 9 one for warrior is Intrepidity. This reduces the accumulation of the loss gauge when receiving damage. As far as I can tell, it reduces this build up by 5%. So basically, if you took damage, Instead of taking 100% of that damage and however much it calculates towards your loss gauge, it's going to take 95% of that damage and calculate it towards your loss gauge. So it's a little bit reducing on your loss gauge, which can be nice on a warrior because you do take a lot of damage because you just kind of tank through hits. So definitely recommend this one on a warrior, but I'm not sure who else would really need it. Next, we come to Asperity on Sorcerer. This increases the likelihood of inflicting debilitations with your attacks. And as far as I can test, this is about 20%. So if you like doing status effects on enemies or setting debilitations, this is a good way to help improve that. And you should probably put this on any class that's focusing on that. So stasis reduces the rate at which items deteriorate in your inventory by, I think it's about 25% roughly. And this is not like that great of a thing. 
Like, honestly, you should just plan ahead, and this is not needed on just about any class. Next, you have Constancy, which increases your knockdown resistance by 30%. This can be huge for any character that's, like, in the thick of it. That's, you know, having to deal with, like, heavy attacks from enemies, like, probably, like, your tank or warrior. This would be really good on that. Next, we come to Catalysis. This increases your damage dealt when exploiting a hostile target's elemental weakness. So if you're playing like a spellcaster or you have your weapons buffed with a certain damage type and an enemy is weak to that, you're going to do increased damage. I think this is about 5% in my testing, which isn't a significant amount, but it is a you know decent increase in damage if you're playing like a spellcaster and you're trying to target the elemental weakness of enemies. So it's definitely one you can take. And then next you come to Sagacity. This augments your magic, increases it by 30, just like the Thief's Verve increases strength by 30. So that's really not that good for a vocation rank 9 thing. It would be really good early on. 30 would be early good early on in the game, but it's not so good by the time you get it, in my opinion. So unless you really want to go Glass Cannon and sacrifice some better augments, then I don't really see using this one. So then we come to Mystic Spearhand, and the first one is Conveyance. This increases your movement speed when carrying or lifting by 10%. That is not a ton, in my opinion. You don't tend to do a ton of carrying or lifting in this game anyway, so I wouldn't recommend this one. After that, you have Opulence. This increases the gold obtained when acquiring coin pouches throughout the game. It's my understanding that this increases this by 5%, which isn't a ton. I don't seem to have gold problems in this game, so it's not one I would recommend. So next we come to Polarity. This increases your strength during the day and magic at night by 5%. It's not a ton, and I don't travel around much at night generally. I mean, you can, obviously. Um, so I'm mostly getting the strength boost out of this, but 5% is, it's better than a flat number because it's going to get better, you know, the further you go into the game, but it's still not that great. But there you are. Those are the numbers, and you can decide if that's better than some or others for you. The next one is Refulgence. This increases the amount of Rift Crystals obtained when acquiring Rift Fragments and the like. This increases this number by 5%. I would definitely not waste a slot on this. You have plenty of those. You're not going to have a problem with that. And the level 9 augment for Mystic Spearhand is actually really good. It reduces stamina consumed while dashing. This is like sprinting by 10%. So that's really fantastic. You sprint everywhere in this game. If you're looking for a good quality of life one for yourself, then this is a good one to have. So this takes us to Magic Archer. And the first one is Sustainment. This increases the physical defense and magic defense of the pawns in your party by 30. That's not a small amount in my opinion. I, you can get, you know, high numbers of defense and 30 isn't like the biggest number out there, but 30 in each of these is not bad. One definitely worth considering. Next, we come to Veracity. This recovers a small amount of stamina when you deliver a killing blow to a target. In my testing, this is about 10% of your stamina when you kill a target with the final killing blow yourself. This is not bad, particularly if you're playing something like a thief where you're using something that's draining your stamina constantly with one of your skills, and then you can just keep killing things in order to keep topping yourself off. Next is Prolificity. This increases the likelihood that smaller targets will drop items when you kill them. This increases the chance by 20%. I don't know what the base chance is for each enemy to drop something, um, but this will increase it by 20%. That's not bad in my opinion. I'm not sure it's worth the augment slot since you can usually just kill more stuff if you want more drops. Next we come to Ascendancy. This increases the strength and magic of the pawns in your party by 30 each. Again, just like the defensive one, Sustainment, this is not bad in my opinion. It's not amazing. 30 is not a ton, but it's not a little bit when you add it all together. But if your pawns in your party are doing fine, I'm not sure you need this. And then lastly, we come to Amelioration, which reduces the amount of time it takes to revive a fallen pawn by one second. This is actually quite good because I think it takes about three seconds to revive a pawn. So this shaves like about a third of that time off. And I know people don't plan for failure and obviously you shouldn't, but there are a lot of times when pawns do stupid stuff and get downed. And being able to pick them up quickly can actually make a fight much, much better. So definitely one worth considering, in my opinion. So this takes us to Trickster. The first one is Detection. This alerts you to a secret token or Wakestone shard in the area by making an audible cue that kind of blinks. And the closer you get to it, it like goes faster and gets louder. And this is invaluable, in my opinion. If you are an exploration completionist, you will want this on your character the second you get it, and you will never take it off. Next, we come to Enlightenment. This makes it so that when you're combining items, you have an extra chance to create another item of the same type. It's a 15% chance, so you basically have like, what is that, one in six and a half. Every time you use it, you should be getting a double one of whatever you craft. That can be really great, but the thing is, is I would suggest just like putting that on before you do a bunch of combining and then taking it off afterward. You don't need to wear it. Next, we have Fugicity, which decreases the likelihood of being beset by hostile targets while camping or riding an ox cart. This is a really good quality of life one. I definitely don't think you have to have this by any means. 
but it reduces the chances of being attacked, whatever those chances are, by about two thirds. It's like a 65% reduction. That is a lot in my opinion. So if you have this on, you're almost never gonna get interrupted while riding in an ox cart or camping, which could be really nice to have. Next, you have obfuscation. This decreases the likelihood that hostile targets will detect you if you don't have your weapons out, if you're not in battle stance. This decreases their likelihood by 15%. So if you like maybe wanna play like a stealth thief, um, something like that, and you're using like Shadow Veil and you're like running around assassinating targets, this might be a good one to have on you. Otherwise, I don't think it's super necessary. Next, we come to Allure. This enables you to raise your affinity with people more easily. I don't know exactly how this is calculated. It's supposed to be a 10% increase to this. I'm assuming that means when you like gift items to people that like it gives them more reputation with you or when you do things that make them happier with you, like, like an escort quest or something like that, you get like 10% more raised affinity with them. I'm assuming that's how that works. I don't think you really need that in this game unless there's like, you know, someone you really need to make happy in order to get an item or something like that. So next we come to Warfare. They only have two augments, but they're really good. The first one is Zeal. It reduces the stamina consumed when performing a weapon skill by 5%. That's a small amount, but it also can add up if you have like a lot of stamina focused augments and gear, making it so that like, I don't know, if you're playing Thief and you're spamming Helm Splitter over and over, it could help, something like that. Definitely won't be needed for everyone, but it's definitely good on some builds. And then lastly, we come to Dynamism, which reduces the amount by which weight affects your movement speed. And I think my understanding of this is that it reduces it by one category. So for instance, if you're like heavy, it would treat you like your average weight. And if you're average weight, it would treat you like your light. I'm, if I'm understanding it correctly, that's how it works. I don't know what that means in terms of exactly how much or little that improves your movement speed, because I don't know what each you know, one of those categories does, but that's kind of what this thing does if I'm understanding it correctly, which is great. It's another quality of life one that, you know, allows you to move more quickly. Probably the biggest headache in this game is running from point A to point B over and over and over, and anything you can do to speed that up is good. So that wraps up our video on the augments of Dragon's Dogma 2. I hope you guys found some helpful information here and realize that some of the augments you thought were good are not quite as good as you thought, and some you thought were bad are actually pretty good. So Keep that in mind and make sure that, you know, you go out there and you play all these uh, vocations in order to get the augments that you want. And we have on the wiki the level that they're unlocked at and we have these values on there. Some of these still need a little bit further testing, but for the most part, I think they're all pretty accurate. As always, if you have helpful tips, leave them in the comments below. And if you have questions, leave them there as well. And I will try and answer them as soon as I can.